This episode of The Modern Rogue is brought to you by Bright Sellers. Head on over to brightsellers.com slash modernrogue50 to get 50% off your first six bottles. That's six bottles of wine for 45 bucks. That's a deal. So good. There's got to be a term for that, right? The Where you're making a heat dome? Insulation. That sounds probably <laughs> closest. Insulation. That's as close as I'm going to get. You should patent that. You should use that. That's a good word. I wasn't trying to be an I swear. No, no. I mean, <laughs> good word. It's good. It's good. There's probably something else, though. There's, there's probably another Thermal word. insulation. There it is. That's what it is. Do domal? Domal insulation. Domal. 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 Shut Do up. <laughs> domal. <laughs> So last year we had two snows in Austin, and, and, and you're newish here. Austin doesn't get a lot of snow, right? We had the good snow. It was cute. It was we nice. We hang out. It was picturesque. Delightful right. time. Then we had the bad snow. You had a rough time. So in my case, I had power but no water. Other yep. people had no power and no water. Yeah, I had uh, intermittent power. Uh, several days with no power, but I had water the whole time, so that was nice. So we're gonna learn an easy way to what? Make a homemade radiator? Yes, yes, so basically a survival heater. So you can just put it up in your house right quick and stay warm in a very small space. And that's the thing a lot of people don't understand about to trying to keep warm in a small space when their heater goes out. A lot of people will bring a generator into the house or yeah. burn something in the house. You'll die. Yeah. And people don't understand that that will kill you. Yeah, they actually have survival heaters that are meant to run indoors. Most people don't have the indoor versions of those, so you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Carbon monoxide poisoning yep. is just the least of them. But in this case, we're gonna take the same simple candles that you put out for date night around a bathtub with yep. a bunch of rose petals or whatever, but like normally all the heat just dissipates yep. and does not fill up the room. We're gonna what, capture it and, and have this become nice and warm? Yes, first we gotta do is stack some bricks. Actually, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. Let's do a little bit of safety, remove the bricks, and let's put down a little bit of foil. You can use a sheet pan if the wax happens to boil over or something like that. Got it. We have a little bit of safety from the wood. And then what? Just... Yep, so set the, uh, set the brick there, and just go ahead and do two layers for me. All right. Just like yep. so. And then let's set the pot on top to see if we got the measurements correct. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real delicate there. Yep, so now what we need is candles. You don't want to use too many candles that are touching each other because oh, if this thing starts to get super warm, it actually can get hot enough inside to light the paraffin wax. So oh. paraffin wax has a ignition point of around 400 degrees. So with a bunch of candles right next to each other, insulated with a pot, it actually can ignite the whole piece. So a guy doing this exact same thing burnt down his houseboat. Oh. So, oh. With this, you do want to be very careful and keep an eye on it and keep your candles spaced out a little bit. I know this is true of citronella. I assume it's the same for the, the wax in there, but if you've ever seen those giant citronella buckets, uh, oh, yeah. and then, you know, if, if all of it gets liquid enough, at some mm -hmm. point, it's not the wick burning, it's just a straight up bowl of burning gas, basically. Yeah, yes. I nearly burned down my friend's condo uh, with one of those. So we I, don't want that. Yeah. No. So, uh, I, okay, I've got what, six, seven here? That, that seems yeah, like maybe that eight, seems, maybe eight. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Okay. So and, now we go ahead yeah. and light them. We should, pro we should probably, for comparison, just also set up eight over here. Sure. And then we can figure out like which one we want to cuddle up to in a storm. Teamwork. There's got to be some joke about how many rogues does it take to light a candle. You know, we've got some other stuff that can make this a hell of a lot more interesting. Yeah, we also have power and a heater. Just saying, some magnesium strips, black powder right over there. So these are theoretically the same thermal output, only we're gonna yes. capture it on this. So just put it on top, That's I guess? it? Just, yes. just like that? Yep. And you have to leave the front open, why? To have airflow so the candles don't go out. This okay. is This is gonna be our chimney where yep. all of the exhaust is gonna come out. Right on. Right now, this is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if you touch it, you might be tempted to think like, oh, I'd rather put my hands over this because that feels warmer, but I have a feeling this is gonna win in the long term. Yeah. There are other methods where you can put layers over the top of it to keep it cooler so you don't actually burn your hands if you have kids around or something like that. Oh, is that a concern about like, uh, I guess it'll get hot enough that it'll burn your body, right? Yes, absolutely. Oh, so it does get like a couple hundred degrees. That is dangerous. Yes, absolutely. So this isn't, this still isn't like a completely safe method. You no. have to watch it and Correct. tend to yes. it and everything. Yeah. 
Whoa, you can already see. Go take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Starting to warm up. Yeah, it's getting pretty warm. What's it at right now? It is up to 75 degrees. That's fast. Yeah. Because we're only, what, like two or three minutes into this? It's climbing relatively quickly, yeah. This is where the fire eating part of my brain wants to point out that if this is a hydrocarbon, uh, it's going to burn at close to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why, you know, you don't want to hold your finger over it. It'll cook it. Oh, yeah. That's good. So like a normal oil heater that you would have in like a space heater? Yep. Uh, those on low setting will get about 160 degrees. Okay. Uh, on high setting, it'll get up into the uh, mid-200s. Okay, at 160, I mean, I guess I guess that's enough to burn, but it's, yeah. it's going to take its time. You can definitely touch your hands to it and not burn yourself, but you can't hold on to it at that temperature. Right. At higher temperatures, of course, it's going to burn you relatively quick, but still, it's still below ignition point okay. for, for most household items. And is this going to be comparable? or? Yes. From what I understand, in about 20 minutes, this will get to around 160 degrees, and given it a little more time, it actually can get up into the mid-200s. Wow. Uh, on the outside. On we're the at outside. 82 right now, and it's only been a couple of minutes. 81. On the inside, it can get it can get really hot, and so that's what we were talking about, the ignition point of the wax actually igniting around 400 degrees. So this doesn't actually increase the temperature of the candle, right? This just collects sure. it. Correct. So this is good for a very small space. So like, think a tent or inside of a car or inside of a closet or a small bathroom you actually be able to heat up that space reasonably well, enough to keep you hopefully safe. If you're down to using candles, you're probably gonna wanna be sparing and just <laughs> huddle around the one rather yes. than you know burn everything yes. at once. And of course, any candle would work as long as it would fit underneath there. All right, so from this side, you can see, obviously the candles are super white hot. It's definitely at this point as warm as your body temperature. Right now, I'm getting 86 degrees on the pot. You go directly to the chimney, oh, it jumps up to 103. There's actually some interesting methods where they use these as hanging pots. So they'll take that little tray and they will have this on the bottom and yep. then have the pot hanging from the top mm -hmm. and all having it suspended in air and they'll have a bunch hanging around a room. Like a warming chandelier. Yeah, almost. exactly. Right? Okay. Oh, wild. Uh, put, put your hands back. Your hands are clearly cooler than the pot. <laughs> It's really astonishing how tiny the flames are and how big outsides the results are. So according to some science I did, yeah. well, actually not me, the science I looked at other people did. The science you researched. The science I, there you go. I researched <laughs> some science. Like, you can tell we've got real careful <laughs> with our words. Research some science. Eskimos would actually use little oil candles inside of an igloo, just one single candle in order to stay alive and warm. Because I guess once you uh, are not circulating a bunch of air, you don't yep. have any wind chill, mm -hmm. and you have everything blocked out. Yep. Yeah, a little bit of uh, whale fat yep. to keep you alive. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just one? Yep. So the IR camera is saying it's coming in at 105. What does the temperature gun say? Temperature gun says 101 and climbing pretty rapidly, 102. Yeah, it's it's creeping up quickly now. What's the top say? Yeah. The chimney reads 113. Yep, that's what I'm showing too. Well, the domal heat coming out. <laughs> <laughs> domal. <laughs> the domal vent? Yeah, the domal Ooh. vent. Okay, all right, just saying, you're cold, just give it a little hug. Mm. I mean, that's that's huggable at this point. Mm. Mm. We should make it soft. I like I like that moment where you come in and you said no beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like now I'm afraid that every time we touch it, we're stealing its uh, heat. Yeah, that's what I kept thinking. <laughs> So what do you what do you think? You gonna keep this in mind next time we have a little winter snow and you have no electricity? No, I'm gonna buy a generator. Uh, that's right. <laughs> and if, and if that somehow gets stolen by the snow, already bought two. <laughs> Jason, what about you? Are you gonna remember your domal heating source? Me, I'm just gonna skate by on my good luck uh, as I always do. <laughs> I'm gonna cuddle up in my jeep with no windows, <laughs> listen to AM radio <laughs> turned up real loud. Oh God. <laughs> It's apocalyptic. It's just the road. It's like Brian's like, well, I'm looking forward to that Cormac McCarthy novel I'm going to live. I got 106. But if you go into the chimney itself, it's up to 122. Yeah, I would have expected this circle to be hotter than everything else, but it doesn't look like it is. It looks like it's all 
pretty uniform, which I suppose is the point of a radiator, <laughs> is to be <laughs> uniform. I, I'm sure there's some experimenting we could do as far as like knocking down bricks a layer to see how much more heat we can trap, that kind of stuff, but. I mean, look, I'm gonna call it legend tested. Yeah. This is a good idea. Yeah, uh, still be safe, but this is much safer than you know, running a generator in your living room or yeah. burning a wicker chair. Or smoking cigarettes to stay warm. Oof. So yes. I can, now I'm picturing you in the snow. Oh, no, I'm the weirdo. <laughs> You're looking like the spy from TF2. You just got all of the cigarettes in your mouth. Oh, mouthful of cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> Brian? Yeah. I am so excited. I know you are. So excited. I feel like it's been too long. You, yeah. ever, you ever bump into somebody and you're like, hey, there you are. Right? That, that's the way it is for Bright Sellers for me. Since we first discovered Bright Sellers, I have fallen in love. My family has fallen in love. The in-laws have fallen in love. I'm gonna assume all the adults in the family have yes. fallen in <laughs> yes. love. Yes. Not yes. the dog, not, no. the, not the kid. No, no, no. But what's not to love? It makes it totally easy to find wine that suits your palate. Yes, they have a special quiz. Seven questions. Yes. And they ask you like what kind of chocolate you like. Right. Or how you drink tea. Yeah. A bunch of personalized questions to make sure the wine is perfectly curated for your taste buds. See, I like just a little bit of surprise. I like to feel like I'm going on an adventure, but most of all, I like not having to make decisions. <laughs> yes. And it gets shipped to your house so you don't have to worry about going to the yes. liquor store. Yes, you don't have to look anybody in the eye. You don't have to have any chatty Cathy's giving yes. them opinions left and white. Oh wait, are these the cards for what we got? Yes. So not only do they ship you fantastic fantastic wine that actually teach you about wine and tell you about each bottle. All right, so tell me this. Did, did you take a quiz for this one? Yes, absolutely did. Did, and so did for you me, answer for me or no, for you? No, for me. <laughs> <laughs> for me, which I think you like it too. So yeah, I, yeah. I like the uh, dark, robust wines. Yes, Usually yes. the Merlot, I don't like them too Cabernet. Sweet. Yep, yep. Absolutely. So yes, we are we are perfect there. Let's see, what do we got here? Merlot from California. Yes. Merlot, California, yep. 18. Uh, uh, main character, tell me about it. Right, and Fruit Forward. This Merlot shows notes of cherry, plum, Vanilla and clove. Yes. I like the clove, but, but the rest might be too sweet for me. Yep. Okay, all right, that's a maybe. Oh, I like, uh, this one has foreign languages on it. I can't, I can't get it out, I'm too excited. This one is called Ladro Duva, the Grape Thief. Monte Prussiano de Bruz. See, yeah. I would be embarrassed if, yeah. well, I guess we're broadcasting this, <laughs> yes. so I should be embarrassed. <laughs> Where does it come from? Exceptionally fruit forward. This one is from Italy, Old World moderate climate. See, you like all the fruit forward ones. Okay, all right. I'm gonna do this one for the most irrational of reasons. All right. I have family from Lodi, California. Oh, Lodi, yeah. So we'll do this Cabernet Sauvignon World Line from Lodi. Juicy flavors of black currant, boysenberry. Sounds like something you shouldn't eat, but I bet it's real tasty. <laughs> Mild with notes of vanilla and baking spices in this bold Cabernet. Yeah, all right, we got, yeah, 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 we're gonna go here. All right, so we want people to go to brightsellers.com slash monorogue50. Correct, and they get six bottles for only 45 bucks, 50% off. That is off. very affordable, and especially when you know whoop, you're gonna whoop. like it. Yes. <laughs> that was dangerous. <laughs> Bright Cellars offers wines beyond your typical grocery store wine, including sustainable varietals and biodynamic wines. I did not make up any of those words. Packaging is totally recyclable, plastic-free, and the smallest carbon footprint box in the industry. Take that, other guys. Oh, yeah. Smells fantastic. You ready? I am ready. Yep. Oh, that's a cab, baby. It's, it's uh, nice and dry. I, I feel like I'm back Ooh. in California. Not that mm. I'd ever admit to being from California. No, you would never. Oh, I do love that black currant I'm down there, though. I'm a Texan. Mm. Thank you, Bright Sellers. Thank you. Yep. And it tastes better the more you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to toast that. <laughs> Offer and link in the description below. <laughs> Double thermal insulation. Oh, looks to me like a case of double thermal insulation. That's going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. 220, 221, whatever it takes. <laughs> whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, well, you can tell the power couplings, they aren't aligned at all. <laughs> now you got to give it the, the YouTube mouth. <laughs> <laughs>